So animals communicate, all animals communicate, and uh, that's what really interests me. What are they saying? How much are they saying? Why are they saying it? And a lot of the work that I do is about finding out mechanisms, finding out how different traits and abilities evolved. So when you see animals or, or any kind of life and you notice that they have similarities, so we have uh, forearms and legs and dogs do as well, then there's a couple of reasons why that could be. I mean, it could be just that they come from a common ancestor and we all inherited these traits. However, if you observe two animals with similar properties, it may be that they don't inherit those properties from a common ancestor, but they just evolved them both separately because they were really good solutions to the problem uh, that they were facing. And the obvious example of that, for instance, is wings. Uh, we know birds have wings, bats have wings, even insects have wings. So wings are convergent. Uh, that's convergent evolution. So one of the really interesting things about wolves and dolphins is they're very, very similar. They don't sound like they're similar, but they really are. Um, they're both very social animals. They're both very intelligent animals and they communicate to establish their groups and their societies. So actually their, their calls and, their, and the sounds that they make are very, very similar. Um, they're different in pitch, but that's about it. If you slow down a dolphin whistle, it sounds just like a wolf howl. It was incredibly striking just how similar that visual representation of a wolf howl appeared to the representations of the dolphin whistles that, that I'd been working with. And that was, a, that was a, a, an important moment. It's, it's, it's not a novel observation, but it made me realize that, that the processes behind why these animals use these particular kinds of sounds were probably similar. There was probably something similar going on. Once you start finding all these common behaviors and common mechanisms on Earth, then it's a very small jump to realize that these are the same mechanisms that are gonna be working elsewhere in the universe. And a lot of the same constraints that animals face on Earth, a lot of the same problems animals have to solve on Earth are similar problems to the ones they're going to solve elsewhere. The one thing that, that we can be really confident of is that complex life or complexity of any sort really can only, only arise in, in one way. That's if it accumulates slowly. Nothing pops into being uh, incredibly complex and sophisticated like an animal. So they must have come from simpler organisms. And that process of simplicity accumulating complexity uh, is what we call evolution on Earth. And, and these are really the, these are the things that, that we know are going to be in common um, across the universe. There are also constraints on, on life that, that we know are common across the universe. So for instance, all life needs energy. Uh, you can't have life without energy and that's going to be the same whatever planet you're on. So some of the things about extraterrestrial life are going to be very surprising. There's no doubt about that. A lot of, a lot of the way that animals are on Earth is the result of coincidences and, and, and that's gonna be the same on any planet. But there are some things that are going to be in common. Um, things like, uh, simple things like having predators and prey. If energy is something that all life needs, then, then sooner or later they're going to try and, and take, them, take their energy from each other. So, so some kinds of life will be eating other kinds of life. Um, the other thing that we can expect to find on other planets is that animals or the equivalent of animals will come together in societies. They'll come together in groups because there are many things that you can do better in a group than you can do on your own. So, so many of the behaviors we see on Earth will be replicated elsewhere in the universe as well.